Hi, this is Pete Dowsett for Audio Production Tips, and today we're going to be looking at the Abbey Road Plate Reverbs by Waves. Now, these are a digital emulation of the four EMT plates that are still in Abbey Road Studios to this day. Now, they were first installed in the late 1950s, and I believe they were actually the first plates that went to any studio worldwide. So, kind of drenched in history, and when you think about these plates, you think about that they've ended up on records by the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Radiohead, lots and lots of classic artists. First of all, how does a plate reverb work? Well, in the 1950s, before these plates got installed at Abbey Road, if you wanted to get some artificial reverb, what you had to do was use a reverb chamber, which was an actual room that was used just to play back sound into to capture some sort of uh, ambience that was then mixed into the recording. Now, this would typically take a lot of space, and also you couldn't really mess with the reverb time or other characteristics of the room without actually redesigning the room or changing the type of material on the walls. So these sort of things were very, very expensive to keep because you'd actually have to have a bigger physical room for it. So kind of plates revolutionized the um, music recording industry in the late 1950s because all of a sudden it allowed you to have some sort of flexibility and control over the tone of your reverb. Now, one of the downsides with plates is that despite the fact that they sounded good and exciting is that they don't really sound like a real room. Okay, so you shouldn't really be trying to use a plate reverb to sound like a real space. But what it does is give this artificial kind of shine and density and nice lush feel that almost becomes like an exciting special effect rather than a realistic space. So how does a plate reverb work? Well, to start with, what you have is some sort of plate that's held up vertically and it's held up and kept in place by four steel springs. OK, and the tension of these steel springs basically gave enough to hold it fairly firm, but had some elasticity to it so that the plate could move around. OK, so what you have in the middle is a transducer. Now, a transducer is a fancy word for um, something that changes energy from one form to another. And in this case, this transducer is effectively a speaker. And when the speaker pushes the air into the plate, it causes it to move back and forward. This vibration will last a number of seconds. And here we've effectively got two pickups. Now, these are basically contact microphones. And it changes that physical vibration into electrical energy. And therefore, that can be stored on a tape or other recording device. So this was basically an artificial way to get a similar effect as some sort of space or some sort of reverb. So, um, what plates also had was something called a damper. Now, a damper was like a bit of fiberglass or, or insulation that you could press against the um, plate, and that would bring the reverb time up or down. The lighter it pressed on it, the longer it would um, reverberate for, and the tighter it was pressed, the more dampened the sound would be, hence the word damper. Okay, and what these plates also had was um, some sort of bass cut. So on the amplifier before the transducer, you could cut some of the bass. And that would mean that you didn't get so much bottom end buildup in the plate. And you've also here got a treble control. Now this didn't actually exist on the plate. This is actually an emulation of the top end of one of the older EMI consoles that they had in Abbey Road because a lot of the recording engineers wanted to brighten up what came off these older plates. So that allows you to do that. Okay, and so if we're looking here, we can flick between the four plates with um, this scroll wheel here. Okay, now all four are going to have a different flavor. Okay, so they were all identical um, EMT plates and they were all bought at the same time. However, these were all handmade and not mass produced. So even when they were installed, they'd have slightly different properties, maybe slightly different tensions, which would mean that they would perform slightly differently. And the other factor is, is that they haven't been messed with that much in terms of the elasticity of the springs. So they're gonna have over time developed different properties for themselves. Uh, and not to mention these first three plates um, have been retrofitted to get rid of two tubes on the output stage. So originally all four were 
fully tube input and output which meant they were going to have a certain type of tonal color now the problem with using tubes for amplification is that they tended to be quite noisy and if anyone's heard real plates it's often a real problem that stacks up and you sometimes have to do some noise reduction or cut some bottom end or top end to make sure that that noise is not audible so what they did on three of them was when solid state components were introduced is they retrofitted uh, and took out two tubes on the output stage to three of these four plates so that they kind of were much lower noise but they obviously lost a little bit of that kind of tube saturation and tube warmth that you kind of expect with tube gear so in a minute we're going to take a look but um, for now let's go through the rest of these controls and nothing should take you by surprise we've got the input gain here and you can link them with this button you've got output gain and again you've got a link and here you've got the pre-delay so this is the amount of time between the signal arriving at the plate and how long the tra uh, it takes for the transducer to play out the speaker and basically this means is you're going to have a delay between the dry signal and when the plate starts which can help separate the reverb from the dry signal which means that your vocal or whatever you're using in the plate seems more forward and the reverb is kind of a spread effect in the background and it helps keep whatever you're sending to the plate seem more forward. We've got drive which is the total harmonic distortion of the plate and it kind of drives those distortion characteristics. We've got analog here which is effectively the noise and hiss of the plate so waves have modeled that separately so that means that we don't have to be worrying so much about how noisy they are and filtering them quite so much and we've got a um, wet and dry knob here so if you're using it as a insert rather than the send and return configuration you can um, use that as a blend knob okay and we've got a damper here and what's important to understand about the damper is these readings here are not in um, reverberation time in seconds they're actually just 11 different positions and as you get into higher positions they're longer reverb times and smaller numbers are smaller reverb times now they vary between about one second and five seconds the other thing to mention is that because they haven't been touched since they've been installed is that the actual reverb times on all four of them feel slightly different like to me the reverb times in A and D seem a bit longer than B and C and D is definitely the darkest and that's not surprising because that's the all tube one A seems to be a longer reverb time and a bit brighter and these kind of seem um, kind of a little bit more mid-rangey to me so obviously you need to listen to this and find what's best for your source material but just by setting it roughly and then flicking between the, the different plates can really really help and finally what we've got here is crosstalk so if you send a little bit of the left signal into the right hand side and vice versa what that will do is help to bring in the stereo image of the plate and make it seem a little bit more realistic so we've got a few positions here so it's between 0 and 100 before anything else, let's start putting this plate on a vocal. Every minute, every second, I keep playing it back, yeah, yeah. Stuck on repeat like an old day track. I give everything I got just to rewind. Hit pause and apologize. Second, I keep playing it back, yeah, yeah. Stuck on repeat like an old day track. I give everything I got just to rewind. Hit pause and apologize. Every minute, every second, I keep playing it back, yeah. Stuck on repeat like an old day track I give everything I got just to rewind Hit pause and apologize 
Okay, so that's a little run through of these plates. Now, for me, for this style of music, I usually like uh, the D plate, which is quite warm, but I'm actually liking A in this case. Obviously, this is a bit too long, so I'm going to try and bring it down back to around two. I think that'll be a good sweet spot. And I was also liking it, it sounded a bit dark to my ears until I was messing with the treble. So in this case, I'm going to keep it quite a short pre delay and uh, turn up the treble and leave the bass cut here. Every minute, every second, I keep playing it back, yeah, yeah. Stuck on repeat like an old day track. I give everything I got just to rewind. Now that's sounding pretty good to me. Let's put it in the track and let's bring the plate up first so that it's too loud and then pull it back. Play that again, and I'm going to uh, mute it on and off. So that just made the vocal sound way, way more special. So let's start putting this on some other instruments. And by the way, this whole track is fairly dry. So now let's go to the snare, which is a real classic thing to put a bit of plate reverb on. It helps to get extra length out of it, but without it becoming too roomy, okay? Great, and now let's put some on these claps, so that should help gel it with this snare drum. So I was actually liking that on the D setting because I felt like the claps were a little bit thin and a little bit dry. So I've increased the uh, reverb time with loosening off the damper. I felt like it was a bit treble heavy because it was about uh, sounding quite thin anyway. So that's really helped even it out to me. So if I just um, turn on and off those two together so you can see what these were like before all the plates. Just to rewind, hit pause and apologize. So you really hear that beautiful decay. It doesn't sound like a real room, but it has this excitement about it that sounds kind of larger than life and just really almost like the things are being 
um, done with more energy okay we've got some electric guitars that are playing an arpeggio that's um, you know really in need of making it sound wider and fatter and I think that the plate will um, do a really good job of this so let's go ahead and put this on this riff so let's play the riff first so you can kind of hear what it's doing Okay, so you can hear that um, the dry sound is uh, panned to the left and the delays a little bit to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and put a plate on both. So it gave that almost slappy character about it and then just a little bit more energy and excitement. It kind of sounded a little bit more like U2 once I put the plate on it. So let's listen before and after uh, with all of these plates taken off and you'll really hear what um, sort of depth and width it gave without becoming overwhelming. Now this is one of the great things about plates compared to some other types of reverbs like uh, algorithmic halls or chambers is that they can kind of become very dense and very... Um, thick in the low end very quickly whereas these plates will have some density in the upper mid that really helps to make something sound you know more energetic but without taking up the whole space <laughs> So just with about four instances of the plate, we've really kind of added a lot more energy and aggression and excitement to it, but without taking up all the space. And now I usually find that plates work well along with your normal reverb. So I quite often add some sort of smaller drum ambience in there and some sort of small room on the vocals as well as maybe um, a couple of other delays and maybe a longer haul on the um, vocal as well so yeah this particular song it's actually a mixing competition so if you go over to the waves website you can download these uh, multi-tracks to mix yourself and you can win some great prizes so um, i'll see you again soon <laughs>